It is a fantastically beautiful day today. I think it's September the 4th or 5th. <laughs> anyway, it's a Sunday. I'm out here getting ready to tear out my green beans. See, these were asparagus yard long green beans. And they've finished. There's some seed pods there that I've let grow. I had a couple of cucumber vines. They finished. <laughs> or something. Anyway, they did their job. They gave us plenty of cucumbers. And this one is for seed. So I'm going to take it in the house, lay it down right here. Pulled out some stuff here that just now that was ready to be finished. And I believe these are collards. Doing all right. Have a little bug damage. I'm gonna do some BT spray pretty soon. I brought it out, so I'll do that later. But anyway, here is where I'm going to plant my peas, right down along that row, so it can climb up the lattice work. But I have to take all this stuff off. You can't just rip it off because you can break this lattice. Even though it's fairly strong, you can still break it by trying to rip off strong uh, plant vines. So let me get these seed pods. I'm gonna take them in the house. And that's uh, gonna be some of the asparagus yard long beans for next year. Although I've already saved some of it. So it's gonna be neat. I've already had the uh, peas sprouted. What I did was I had to be out of town three or four days and I thought, oh, I, I can't go out and just plant those peas because I don't have the bed ready. I have to amend the soil back there. I amended it here when I planted those, but because things were growing there, I didn't bother with that back there. So I'll do that real quick after I pull out the, the deals. So anyway, to get a quicker start on it, because it takes 60 days for these peas right here. See, they're already sprouting. Normally, I would let them grow longer in their little pots, but I'm not because this is a cool day and maybe tomorrow won't be so hot and they've already hardened out I think one day <laughs> which is really maybe not enough time but we'll see how that works so normally I wouldn't plant them out so early when they're just tiny like that but I'm not going to disturb the roots because they are in toilet paper roll holders which I have really enjoyed using those things i was surprised i used them one time before many years ago and i didn't like it particularly but this year i've been using them a lot and they're they're great they're great for plants where you don't want to disturb the roots uh, plants like well like peas for example that you're going to put out and you want them to make and these make in 60 days so i don't want to set them back any more than i have to all right, I'm gonna to get to that work of cleaning that lattice work up. And over here is another part where I'm going to plant them. Just gonna plant them over in the edge there. That's the New Zealand spinach. It's still trucking along. We've had several uh, cuttings from them and I'm gonna cut them again today. So I'll do it along this edge right here. I don't think I'm gonna do it over there. I don't think so. I don't think it gets enough sun there. So we'll just stick to these two garden beds. Garden bed number six and garden bed number five. That's how I keep them straight in my mind. All right, I'm, I'm hopping to work. Well, this side is pretty clear, so I have to go around and do the other side. And on the lattice work right in here, I found a, um, what do you call it? Anyway, uh, a thing that's going to be a butterfly. <laughs> it was spinning its cocoon and it barely started, it looked like. And it would be exposed. There would be nothing growing around it like there was. So I thought, oh, should I move it? So I did, and maybe I shouldn't have. So I moved him over here to this fennel. And I know this is one of the good butterflies. 
or it turns into one of the good butterflies. He's still alive. I'm hoping he can spin and go ahead and do his thing. Redo it, because he'll be okay on this fennel for a while. I'll leave it here, and he's sort of hidden a little bit. So, we can hope. And then I noticed as I was working that even though the netting is up here, look, it's been got. There's a little bit more damage, not as bad as what it normally is when, when they're exposed. So I've got to do BT on this too. This is a, I believe a collared, and these are kales, a blue dwarf kale over here that I planted in August. So I'm gonna have to go to the other bed that I planted the brassicas and check and see how they're doing too. The netting helps, but it's not a foolproof thing. So I'm now I'm gonna get to the other side and clean that up. All right, it's clean as a whistle. And I sprayed the kale and the collards with BT. You have to make sure you get under the, the leaves. That's where those little green worms live, is under those leaves usually. So they've got to bite more the plant to <laughs> get poisoned with the kale, I mean with the BT. So <laughs> I'm gonna lose a little bit more of them, but I mean pieces of them. And here is the pile, it's heading for the compost. So next is planting the peas. I'm going, I planted uh, two peas per little tiny pot, a little toilet paper pot, roll pot, and I'll plant them about two to three inches apart. That's kind of close spacing, but I do intensive gardening, or what I call intensive gardening. We'll see how it goes. I wasn't planning on plant, planting peas, to be honest with you at all until about two weeks ago and then it got kind of rushed because I was working so many days I thought man I'll never get them in so that's why I put them in those toilet paper rolls as I said so they could start sprouting while I was gone for about four days so it saved four days and supposedly like I mentioned I believe maturity is 60 days so I was watching different people say, plant your peas, plant your peas. And I thought, this is zone 7A. I thought we planted our peas in the spring, which I do. And I've managed to get a good crop if I do it in raised beds. I've never been able to get a good crop of peas in, in my in-ground beds, probably because of rabbits, rodents, etc. So that's why I'm putting in, them in the raised bed right here and over there. I took the netting down to spray the BT. I'll put that back up. I need to get wire hoops. I don't want the uh, plastic ones, but I do want wire. Just make my own. I've just been too busy to do that right now. So now I'm gonna plant these peas. I wanted to show you if um, your cardboard comes up higher than the pea or whatever plant you have in it. I usually tear it a little bit and bend it down or tear it completely off, but usually bending it down works best to where it's at the top of the soil. The reason you want to do this is because it can be more easily dried out if there's cardboard on top. It sort of sucks the moisture or wicks it away from the plant with it sticking out like that. So anyway, that's what I do. The peas have only been in these pots like since September the 1st. <laughs> I did pre-soak them one day for one day and then I put them in but that's not very many days and look at that they do grow fast. So if you do start your peas inside which most people don't you will need a long pot. <laughs> it can be narrow but it have to be long maybe a whole to toilet roll for maybe two weeks of staying in the pot. They're, they're such fast growers. Now, I had already amended the soil with compost. Peas don't require much nitrogen because they make their own. Another thing I wanted to show you was I left the roots of the previous plants, the green beans in here. So I'm working around those roots. I left them because it just adds nutrients to the soil. So I just cut them with scissors right at the, the line of the soil and just left them in there. And we're planting the peas around them. Well, this bed, number five, is planted. I put almost two rows of peas when I could. Like here, I wasn't able to because it's too close to the kale. 
and then that is collards, I don't remember which kind, and this is broccoli, I was mistaken. Anyway, I finished that row out, that was almost a double row. So, and then I sprinkled ash around the uh, brassicas because they like a little ash. And the peas are nestled in their little bed of compost, freshened. I'm going to water the peas, but I'm going to be careful not to water the uh, broccoli, the brassicas, because I sprayed them with BT and I don't want to wash it off. So I'll have to water this ash. And we make it ourselves. We have hardwood forest back over there. Kind of see it, that's a strip on our property, a strip of trees, I, we call it the forest. And that's where we get our hardwood, oak and things. And we burn it in a barrel, our burn barrel. It's right out there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little ways out there, <laughs> right in the middle of the picture. Okay, so now I think I was overly enthusiastic. Look how many peas are left to plant. But you know, I really wanted to use the package up. I don't know how many years I've had it, but I'd say at least five or six years and they're still sprouting. Peas, pea seeds last a long time, but I'm afraid they're going to wear out. So that's why I planted so many, but I think I'm overly enthusiastic. So I may have to just stick them wherever I can stick them. So here goes. Now I'm going to do a double row here along this bed number six. I can do it more easily because the plants aren't crowded. All right, here I go again. Here's what I have left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two peas in them. Now this container held six per row, 13 down. So six times 13 should be what? <laughs> 83, what? 78. 78 of these little pots times two, which would be 16 carrier one, about 156 plants. So there's that many plants in that bed, not in that bed alone, but in this bed also. And I had to put a few over here, even though I didn't want to, but I did. So that's bed number seven, bed number six, and bed number five. While I was uh, sitting there planting, I was busy thinking, of course. And here's what I did. I just took a regular size toilet paper roll, my gloves torn, and I cut it in two. And then I just stacked the halves like this. And I was able to do like six right here. Now that would be for peas, that short of area would be for peas that are on, on, only going to stay in there maybe a week at the most. Mm, you might do two weeks, I'm not sure you could because the roots were already coming out. Now if I were going to do maybe three weeks, I would put them in, in this and hopefully it would be okay. But I wouldn't generally keep peas in the house under lights any longer than three weeks. But it is a nice way to start them when you just don't have time to go out and get your bed made or if you haven't done it yet or it, it's not bad. I kind of liked it. I was in the house in the air conditioning, didn't have to deal with this hot weather. And then here it just happened to be a beautiful day. I was also thinking too, when I was thinking about these toilet roll papers, or what are you, to toilet paper rolls. I'll get it straight one of these days. This is st some that we saved just this year. I have a box that I just, we just throw our paper roll, paper towel rolls in it, and I cut them up to whatever size I want, and our toilet paper rolls. And I was thinking how much we use. We use a lot. No wonder people <laughs> were worried about running out of toilet paper. But I was thinking back in my past when I was about 10 and there was four of us girls. Uh, we um, lived up in Kansas. We had moved from Oklahoma. My mother had remarried. And so our stepfather was a farm manager and we moved from Oklahoma to Kansas. We lived in a nice house, the farm manager's house. 
It had running water, but it had no toilets. So we went out to the outhouse. I think it was either a three-holer or a two-holer. I'm not sure. Well, with four of us girls, it was nice that it was more than just one. And we had no toilet paper. So you might wonder, well, what did we use? Well, we used the Sears and Roebuck catalog. We tear off a sheet or two or however much it took, and that's what we used. And I'm thinking, well, nowadays, there aren't many Sears and Roebuck catalogs out there, as far as I know. We had them every year. Every year, my mother would get the catalog and she'd order our clothes from, from Sears for school. So we had a good supply of toilet paper just through the catalog. And I've heard that people use different things in the past. What is it, corn uh, husk? Anyway, the, um, the wrappers on the corn cobs. They, they can be used. I've heard that people use certain kinds of leaves, but one thing you don't want to get a hold of is poison ivy leaves. Oh my, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> that would give you a thrill. So I was just reminiscing about when I was younger, I was probably, like I said, about 10 years old at that time. And then the next time we moved, we had a house with complete with indoor plumbing. And that was a blessing, especially in the winter time. Can you imagine going out in the ice and snow and up in Kansas, and in the panhandle of Oklahoma back in those days, it got cold and we had blizzards and it was horrible going out there to that um, outhouse when it was so cold. So I'm glad that we finally were able to have homes that had indoor plumbing and we still enjoy that to, the, to, our day, to this day, all of us do, or most of us do. There are still some people that have outdoor plumbing and that's okay, we do what we can do. Well, that's it for my uh, pea uh, planting uh, episode. I'm glad to get it done. I think my eyes were bigger than my sensibility. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how much we use, how much we can preserve, and how much we can give away, or even see if they make it. That was, that's gonna be the fun thing. All right, you guys have a really got, a good day on this pretty, misty, cool day.